Hello and welcome to Working With Miniatures. I'm Jim and tonight we're going to be painting a Sachem Warlord on a War Eagle from the Mythic America's War Game. We'll primarily be using Army Painter Speed Paints and War Paints. Let's get started. This miniature was previously primed with Vallejo's matte black followed by anti-zenithal spray of German red brown and zenithal sprays of peach pink and titanium white inks. I also wanted to note that this miniature was made up of parts from three different materials, four if you include the wooden base that comes with it. This video will only focus on the flesh and feathers, though the colors I used for everything will be displayed at the end of this video as per usual. I start with a base coat of maca skin thinned one to one with water and apply it over two to three coats, allowing a minute or two to dry in between these coats. These colors I used for this miniature are the exact same ones I used for one of the mercenaries I painted in a previous video. Once the final layer of maca skin is dry, I mix the base coat flesh color with onyx skin at a one to one ratio and then add equal parts water to thin it down. This, like all coats done for the flesh, is done over multiple coats, with this shade being focused in between the muscles or ground facing parts of the body. The first highlight is done with tiger's eye skin, thinned and applied the same, only focusing on about 80% of the muscles, leaving the shadowed areas and some of the base color untouched. This is a look at the miniature after the base, shade, and first highlight have been completed. The second, third, and fourth highlights are done the same, only covering less area with each highlight, making sure to leave at least of the previous highlights showing. The last highlight I'm adding very little of. Though I airbrushed this miniature at the beginning, that was more for the base and to make it easier to see the details. For nearly everything on this miniature, I am full base coating at first, so the airbrush work could have easily been skipped or replaced with dry brushing instead. For this miniature, I didn't use a lot of speed paints as my base coats like I've done in the past. A lot of the time I find myself going back and changing or tinting the highlights the speed paints create. I find myself wanting to just paint the highlights myself as I need the practice anyway. I think I'll be using speed paints primarily for large sections that they would be the most beneficial in such as these wings, maybe the hair, or like a fur cloak. Things with a lot of deep textures. Otherwise, I'll likely only be using them as a tent after thinning them down heavily. Much like speed paints, I find myself using washes less and less, and I've already started using them in the same manner as I plan on using the speed paints as mentioned previously, only on very textured surfaces. Once the wash is dry, I apply a shade to all of the feathers. Yep, all of them even the ones on the underside. Altogether, I spent roughly 15 hours painting this miniature. Seven of those hours went into shading and highlighting these damn feathers.
For the first highlight, I spend a while adding a little texture to the larger feathers, making sure to remember that the thin fibers that make up a feather is angled away from the body. I also do a thick edge highlight around each individual feather and on the upraised center stems. Don't let the sped up video fool you, this took a pair of forevers. The second highlight is done in the same manner as the first, however only over about 30-40% to 40 of the previously highlighted area, and with thinner edge highlights. The final highlight was only added to the highest parts of the wings as a light dry brush, as well as to the tips of the larger feathers. For the white feathers, I start with a base coat of skeleton bone thinned with equal parts water over several coats, again allowing time for each coat to dry before applying the next. I then add some strong tone wash to where the shadow should be, and how this dries on the tail feathers is a good example of why I do not use washes as much as I used to. The hope was that it would darken the recesses evenly to act as a shadow, but these large smooth sections do not play well with washes, and I spent a lot of time cleaning this mess up with more skeleton bone and further highlights. The wash on the eagle's head is fine as it has more of a texture, letting the wash pull where I wanted it to. Here I had to start the arduous task of adding the base color back to minimize the blotchiness of the wash. I decided to do this with angled hatching lines as I did with the larger brown feathers, as well as dry brushing a little on the head to bring back some of the base color. The highlights are then completed the same as on the brown feathers, covering less area each time, and with the final highlight only being applied to about 20-30%, to and only then as thin as reasonably possible. This is the final result, at least that's going to be shown here. When I get some free time, I'll likely take this outside and airbrush a little bit of color to the bottom of the wings to add a little darker reddish tint. I'll mask off the Warlord as the sculpt is so small that it would be easy for the overspray to disrupt the work on him. For lessons learned, I have to go back and add some highlights to the rocks on the base. I was hoping the multiple speed paints I added for shadows and tints would be enough, but looking at it during editing, it's clearly not. There are also some spots on the upper back, right arm, and left thigh that look fine, but only when looking at the miniature from above. I need to spread the highlights down some, as light should tend to wrap around in cylindrical objects. And oh my god, I just realized I forgot to paint the feathers on the damn tomahawk. I'll be painting one of those white and the other brown to match the feathers of the eagle and headdress. And finally, here's a list of materials and colors I used in this project. That's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something and were inspired to start or expand your own collection. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Work Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Until the next video.